Welcome to the s and Group Press Conference on the New Progressive Society's Report on Sustainable Equality. It's my uh, pleasure to welcome many speakers today with us who will uh, outline uh, their views on the report. And uh, then, of course, are ready to answer your question. First speaker is s and Group Vice President Udo Bullmann. Hello and good morning, everybody. Here we go. This is our match plan for the forthcoming mandate. This is the match plan for the campaign, and this is the match plan we will urge the forthcoming commission to follow up to because we see Europe is in danger. This world is in danger. Globalization, digitalization as a challenge as well as a chance, climate change, worldwide migration, we are in a situation where we have to give real answers to real people. And what we will not swallow anymore is that political institutions do not live up to these kind of challenges. We, the socialists and democrats in the House, have for many, many years worked on a holistic, progressive agenda because we know only if economic change, environmental change, and social change is addressed by mutually supportive strategies, this world has a chance and Europe can live up to its capacities. This is our proposal also for the progressive family for a discussion on a forward-looking strategy to the benefit of all people in Europe not only for the happy few. We have to change our policies, but in an inclusive society where everybody can profit from the new Europe which we are trying to build. Now I would like to uh, give to Kathleen, and she is going to introduce our great work of the Independent Commission for Sustainable Equality, led by Luca Katzeri and Paul Nirop Rasmussen. Please, Kathleen. Thank you very much, Udo, um, and welcome to this uh, press conference. It's with a lot of proud that um, uh, we can present here today the report of the Independent Committee. Uh, maybe some words why we installed this in Independent Committee. First of all, Udo mentioned it already, it's extremely important, is the raising inequalities in Europe and in the rest of the world is the reason why we um, installed the Progressive Society as a think tank within the SMD group. But it's also clear for us and essential for us that it's um, not just a social crisis, but it's the combination of the social and the ec ecological crisis. And they are combined together. Eh? Um, you can see that um, when you look at uh, CO2, when you look at pollution, it's the most vulnerable people in our society who are the first victims of that. Eh? And I want to be very clear, um, if you look to the, um, to the uh, policies of European leaders of the last couple of years, you can see that there is attention to greening the economy, uh, uh, CO2, pollution, but it's not greening the economy that will solve the problems that we are witnessing in Europe. Uh. It's the sustainability that is the way forward. Um, and in that belief, we installed uh, the independent committee because, of course, if you know that, you need fundamental and radical change in Europe and its member states. But for that you need to grow and, and re to really dig into um, the policies of <laughs> Europe uh, and for that 
we needed experts and people of all, all around Europe. Um, there are more than 30 experts in this independent committee coming from all sorts of, uh, a lot of academics, former politicians or still politicians today, um, but also people from the NGO world who worked almost a year to come to that uh, radical change. Um, and as Udo mentioned, this is, this is not the Bible, eh? that's not the way we work, eh? um, but this is um, for us a strategy and a plan, not just for the months to come, but for the years to come and to radically change the way Europe works and the way our economy is built. And um, I'm, I'm really proud to give the floor to our two um, uh, co-chairs. Um, uh, um, they're very well known. Uh, we have Paul Nierup uh, Rasmussen, not just only the former minister, former prime minister of Denmark, but also uh, for a long time the PS um, uh, president. And Luca, uh, Luca Katseli, who is the director of the board of the National Bank of Greece, but also former minister of labor and social security. I give the floor to, to Paul, I think, and then uh, to Luca. Hello, everybody. This is the sustainable equity. When are things sustainable? In our mind, as Udo and Kathleen said, sustainability means leaving no one behind. Sustainability means combating poverty seriously with effects in the next five years. That's what we are going to propose here. Sustainability means we will end greediness in the financial sector. We will create a new culture instead of the greediness culture in the financial sector. We will reshape capitalism so that we will create new jobs. We will have a new very strong strategy ensuring that territories in the southern part of Europe, in the eastern part of Europe, feeling they're left behind when it comes to an equal economic, social and sociological development should come inside in a common direction. I will make a few points about reshaping capitalism because I feel that the responsibility of structural character are there. Those who have created this economic, ecological crisis are not ordinary people, but those who have power, economic power for the time being, and we are going to make a true democracy and to change the behavior of the market and financial capitalism. We're going to do it in number one way. Everybody have to pay their taxes according to our legislation and according to fairness. And those who don't will be observed and will be, will be punished. We will have a new euro poll in Europe, which will have the same powers as the one we know, but even more, combating financial crimes. The Cumex paper, the tax paradises, the tax evasion, the whitewashing of money, you have heard all about it. There will be a new European body ensuring fairness and transparency and legality. Number two, if you are a very, very big firm today on the IT, you know Google, you know Facebook, you know all of them. Problem, they don't pay taxes. We will have a tax reform here saying those who don't pay taxes of these big companies will have to do it, even if we can make it accountability in the shorter run, 1% of their turnover will have to go to the Commonwealth. Number three, we will have to reform the banks. Their CEOs and their leadership have to have re moved away their incentives to do the same thing as they did in the past when the financial crisis is driven over, as they tell each other. We will have a new culture inside that sector. And finally, we will have a stop of competing among member states on lowering taxes on companies. In according to the wish of ordinary people and their living conditions, we will have a common minimum taxation of companies in, in Europe so we avoid combating to the bottom but instead creating a new economic growth on fair conditions. That's the major points on the financial sector. My colleague will take you on to the fundamental economic policy, please. Thank you very much. Well, in 2016, 118 million Europeans, namely one-fourth of Europe's population, including many kids, were at the risk of poverty or social exclusion, at the same time that 5% of the wealthiest Europeans owned 40% of Europe's private wealth. Inequality was rising and is rising. Living standards are deteriorating 
and the European project is at risk. This report presents a set of proposals for radical change in Europe to promote well-being for all, to reignite the European project, to make it sustainable, and to underpin democracy. Now, it has a vision, a vision of a just and inclusive Europe. It has a clear strategy built and extending our commitments to abide by the Sustainable Development Goals signed by all governments three years ago in 2015 and presents a set of policy actions that can translate these Sustainable Development Goals into actual policies implementable in Europe of today. There are 100 proposals, 10 uh, steps to follow, and I will concentrate on an important set of proposals concerning governance because everybody's asking all the proposals are good can we make them happen can we enable change so in the last part of the report we propose an alternative a radical change in the governance of the european semester now the present european semester does not fit with sustainable development in three dimensions it focuses on primarily fiscal targets, quantitative targets, linked to GDP, public deficit to GDP, and debt to GDP ratios. These are the only fiscal rules, are the only ones which are legally binding. There is no mention of social indicators or environmental indicators. And finally, decision-making takes place in silos, resulting in weak national ownership no partnerships, and an underrepresentation of the European Parliament. Now, this report is about sustainability. It has, uh, presents an agenda linking economic transformation, social transformation, and environmental transformation. And it is these linkages that make it powerful. But to make it happen, we need to change the indicators by which our policies are being uh, monitored, uh, designed, and evaluated. So we propose a sustainable development cycle built around a sustainable development pact with very selective binding objectives. A three-year multi-annual sustainable framework which would help to finance it. An annual sustainable semester process as a surveillance mechanism of the new pact. A regulatory scrutiny board to code and check EU legislation through proper sustainability impact assessment. And a European sustainable well-being board to monitor and evaluate recommendations and policies. This new sustainable development cycle will be a multi-annual exercise aiming at the same time to implement sound fiscal policy on an equal footing, however, with sustainable development policies. The important thing is that we develop a set of binding objectives, a scoreboard, which will provide the guide both for national policies and for EU policies. And from that score, the, both the policies will be derived, monitored, and evaluated. We think that this report can form an agenda for change in Europe and it needs, if we go forward and uh, be able to implement the governance proposals, then we can be hopeful that a new Europe will come, uh, will come ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Luca Cazzelli. Now I would like to hand over to our S&D Vice President, Mercedes Bresso. Uh, Merci. Je vais parler en français. Thank you. I'm going to speak French. So if there's anyone that uh, needs uh, interpreting, the possibility is provided. First of all, I would like to highlight that this radical change that we are proposing through this report, which uh, evidently is quite extensive because it uh, explores even the details of what would be needed in order to um, obtain the overall 
uh, results uh, outlined in the 10 points. It speaks about the idea that if we really want to achieve sustainable development in economic, social, and environmental terms, then you need to um, focus on this uh, triptych that you will find mentioned in the report, which will be accomplished through the necessary measures concerning the economy, reshaping capitalism, measures that concern the environment, and the ways to develop a sustainable society and economy, as well as social measures. Because as we have seen with the recent uh, Gilets Jaunes protests in France, people are ready to include environmental issues, but as long as their own social problems and their needs for life and work are kept into in consideration. So if we consider these three uh, poles, in the three packets of measures, there will be a certain amount of common ground, which will lead to the result. And this must always expand as these three types of policies are integrated in policies in general. And this represents the radical change that we're discussing. And I would like to highlight two points because uh, my colleagues have already enumerated issues uh, quite extensively. The first point establishes that, uh, that we need to recreate democracy and to give it back to everyone. And there are those who envision a citizenship contract which defines what democracy under sustainable development is for everyone. Therefore, we need to um, rejoin the citizens through a growing development and a series of uh, measures that are uh, required. And this is of fundamental importance, clearly, for European socialists. The second point that I would like to highlight concerns territory. That is, first of all, we need to give power back to the citizens in order to uh, achieve their local policies while not abandoning any territory in Europe. About 20% of European territory is uh, covered by uh, cities or urban areas where a bit more than half the population lives. The remaining 80% of European territory with where the remaining 50% of the population lives consists of what we could call immobile Europeans. That is, those who are there protecting the area and who are expected to achieve all of the sustainable development policies that will safeguard uh, the protection of their uh, areas. So this 80% of territory and 50% of the population must absolutely not be abandoned. However, it's not only an effective cohesion policy that needs to be financed well, we also need to reconsider all our policies, especially in view of their local impact. The goals are the same, but the specific measures to be developed are different. So I think that this is a very important point for us to help local areas that uh, represent essentially the breadbasket of Europe and what really needs to function. And if it this isn't functioning, then Europe is not functioning. These uh, areas need to regain their future, and we need to have European policy that concerns all of Europe and not just urban areas. In urban policy as well, as you know, there are serious problems as well. We have the problems of the suburbs. Therefore, we have various issues to deal with, with tools that must be ad suitably adapted to the real conditions of uh, each uh, local area. These are the points that I wish to highlight because sustainable development can work only if all of our citizens are convinced that it's something important for their future and they also are involved with it in order to improve their own 
lives, and the condition of our planet. Thank you very much, Mercedes Preso. ...from your side. Or has everything been crystal clear? Yes, please, if you could indicate your name and medium and also to whom the question is for. Merci. To whom uh, is interested? Uh, Bardera on the Standard newspaper. Is this supported by your Spitzenkandidat, uh, Franz Timmermans? Because I have the impression that he belongs more to the Deselblum school of thinking. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that this is a misunderstanding on your side. Uh, for uh, the first argument, uh, the whole socialist and social democratic family is on a fight. And we are going to elect a Spitzenkandidat who is very much in line with our school of thought and who already has contributed uh, to our uh, deliberations. If you see him fighting for freedom and democracy in his role as uh, commissioner, as first vice president of the commission, once you have seen his commitment to the question of sustainability, you will be without any doubts uh, that he is pushing for a progressive agenda. So if you have different ideas, um, be ready to be surprised. Thank you. Are there further questions from your side? <coughs> no? Okay, any c further comments? Yes, Paul, please. Yeah, just one, one, one uh, underlinement of, of what we are saying. You know, quite in contradiction to what, what journalists normally see when they go to national politics or European politics, is where do the compromise lay, right? And it's a little bit here or a little bit there. I, I can't disappoint you that this is not about a little bit here and a little bit there in this report here. It is really radical reforms, as I hope you have got the impression in this short presentation of the report, which is just ahead of you. I just want to say that our, our big experience in the past five years have been that we have to change, that we cannot just go on telling people, well, you know, we're going to make uh, life a little bit better for you, even if you have had negative real wages. We're going to make it a little bit better. They will not give you the confidence any longer. People want change. They want that everybody should have a role in the society and they cannot accept that their children and grandchildren will not have the same or better living conditions that they have. And they don't want to see the deterioration of the planet as they have seen in the past. So the second point here in this report finally is we have to do things at the same time with the same direction. And the five things we have to do are this front page of sustainable equality. We have to do social policy. We have to do fair transition from the old economy to the green economy. And we have to reform the culture of greediness in the financial sector. And we have to make the big companies pay their share of the taxation, you see. So radical change, same, same time same direction to the benefit of ordinary people. That's, that's the real thing in this report here. I have further additions. Mercedes Bresso first, then Kathleen van Bremt, and then Luca Cazzelli. Uh, just to emphasize the very important facts of a very radical proposal, which is a representing capitalism section and which provides for a legally binding passport for corporate responsibility which means uh, an operating license for the European single market for all companies w with revenue uh, above 500 million euros and for the others well the big companies will have to have that passport which shows that they've complied with the uh, social economic and environmental rights the others will be subject to directives if we win the elections obviously which will set out their minimal responsibilities economically, 
environmentally and socially. So it'll be uh, a, a national passport for the biggest ones who are the, the most uh, evasive, who always uh, slip out of our hands, and these are the directives for the others. That's an example. There are other ones I could give you, and you will see this in the uh, booklet which shows how radical these proposals are, because we believe firmly that without a radical approach, we cannot change Europe. And it shows, too, that it's only at European level that this can be done, not at the level of the individual states. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, I just want to add, because it's a, a, a very important question um, of a journalist regarding the strategy and the future, of course. Uh, um, we are a very important group in this parliament. Yeah? And I'm absolutely convinced that we will remain a very important group in the next parliament. And if the next commission wants the support of that very important uh, group, they will need to read this report. Yeah? And maybe we, we need to, be sh to, to strengthen ourselves to use the power that we have in this parliament. Luca Cazzelli, please. Thank you. I just want to finish by saying what is innovative about this report. There are the following elements. First of all, that it promotes a radical change, an agenda for radical change. Secondly, that it focuses on sustainability, building on the SDGs, on the Sustainable Development Goals, and focuses on the interlinkages between the economic transformation the social transformation and the ecological transformation. You cannot have ecological or environmental policies without consideration of social policy or of economic policy. So bringing, highlighting the linkages between these three uh, dimensions of sustainability are, is extremely important. Third, that it presents 110 very concrete proposals that could be implementable if there is the political will. Fourth, that there is a scoreboard of new indicators for monitoring policies, for designing policies, for monitoring policies, for evaluating policies. And finally, it has a new governance structure and it proposes a governance structure that can change the rules by which policy is implemented in Europe. Thanks a lot. If there are no further questions, I look around. No? Then I would like to thank all our speakers and uh, wishing you a good day. Merci. Thank you.